Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Neuve Chapelle, located in the Artois region of France, from March 10th to the 13th, 1915. Great Britain's forces were looking for a way to recover some of what was lost in the German assault earlier in late 1914 and early 1915. Having refilled their ranks with new troops fresh from England and her volunteers from India, a decision was made to take the area of Neuve Chapelle, while the core idea was for the attack to split the German lines and then let the Allies push into Aubers Ridge with the goal of reaching Lille, it would also act as a way for the British forces to regain some face after having lost their first attack on Neuve Chapelle back in October of 1914. Fresh off the reinforcement and resupply trains, the British 4th Corps and Indian Corps were moved up the line. Their movement was hidden by artillery barrages of more than 350 guns, both from the French and British forces. Another task that was performed to hide their movement was the French 10th Army's attack on Vimy Ridge, just north of the Artois Plateau, and the 1st Army would take Aubers Ridge. Unfortunately, the French forces that were part of the attack eventually were cancelled when the British were not able to rescue the French 9th Corps at Yepers, as the 9th Corps was supposed to assist the French 10th Army. In it. While this was happening, Britain was taking advantage of new technologies of photography and aircraft. They did this by using a British Royal Flying Corps, attack the German Air Corps, pushing them back, and then conducting aerial photography in poor weather. This allowed detailed maps to be made for the British forces and showed where all the German locations were. On March 10th, 90 British 18-pounder field guns of the Indian and 4th Corps opened up on the German barbed wire, destroying the barbed wire in less than 10 minutes. The remaining Indian and 4th Corps artillery, consisting of another 15 18-pounder guns, six six-inch howitzer siege batteries, and six four-and-a-half-inch howitzer batteries consisting of 60 howitzers unloaded on the actual German trenches. Historian Martin Gilbert has noted there are more artillery shells fired in the first 35 minutes of this battle, the entirety of the whole Boer War that the British were involved with that just happened 15 years before. This was still early in the war, and lessons were still to be learned as the Germans realized that their trenches that they were dug which were three feet deep, with breastworks that stood four feet higher, disintegrated under the artillery fire. As the British destroyed the German trenches, the 1st Canadian Division at Flerbault pinned down German reinforcements. Not everything worked out for the British so well, however, as the Meerut Division and Garwal Brigades of the Indian Corps mistakenly attacked too far to the south and ended up attacking parts of the German trenches that were not shelled, bringing the advance to a halt. Meanwhile, the Germans had been decimated but at least two platoons of the German 10th Company Infantry Regiment 16 had maintained their cohesion and fought back. Unfortunately for those platoons, the German center defenses were routed quickly and the British pushed through to Neuve Chapelle by 10 a.m. Feeling victory happening, General Douglas Haig, the British overall commander, released the British 5th Cavalry to push through the opening at Neuve Chapelle. When the 5th tried to push through, though, they found that the Jager Battalion 11, with more than 240 men and supporting machine guns, were waiting for them. The Jaggers were able to hold the British for more than six hours, forcing the British 5th Cavalry Brigade to eventually retreat, stopping the full push by the British at that point. While the aerial photography had helped, it had not identified the Jagger Battalion, and the British began learning the limits of what aerial photography could do. The fighting continued for several more days, but eventually the British used up most of their artillery ammunition and had to abandon the push completely by March 15. Casualty figures were harsh for both sides. The British troops suffered more than 7,000 troops lost, consisting of at least 2,791 from the 7th Division and at least 4,814 from the 8th Division. Meanwhile, the Indian Corps suffered more than 4,200 casualties, including the Meerut Division suffering more than 2,353, while the Lahore Division lost at least 1,694 people. The Canadians who kept the German reinforcements back for the British had 100 of their own troops killed and more than 200 wounded or missing from the 1st Canadian Division. The Germans themselves didn't have an organized casualty list at the time. However, the diary of Crown Prince Rupert wrote that he had lost 8,500 men or more, including 6,017 or more from the 6th Bavarian Reserve Division, 1,665 from the Bavarian Reserve Infantry Regiment, 666 casualties from Infantry Regiment 14th of the 7th Corps, and 1,322 casualties from Infantry Regiment 13. This, however, went a little bit counter to the 2010 estimate by researchers of more than 10,000 German soldiers killed or wounded. It should also be noted that located here is the Nove Chapelle Indian Memorial, 
commemorating more than 4,700 Indian soldiers and laborers who died on the Western Front during World War I. This is for people with no known grave. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.